chicken. Perhaps the most popular bird in Britain. Remove legs, wings, parson's nose. Stuffed with garlic and salt. Poaching stock. Carrots, celery, leeks, pepper and coriander. Thyme, bay leaf. Poach, 12 minutes. Morel, mushroom sauce. If you can't find morels, use a dried sep or just a dried wild mushroom. Shallots. Salt, thyme, garlic. 100 grams dried morels. We get some flavor on there. I much prefer using dried mushrooms because it gives it a lot of intensity. White wine. Reduce. Remove chicken. Add stock. Hundred fifty mils, double cream. And the secret behind this sauce, of course, is getting it to almost like a cafe au lait colour. Mm. We squeeze all that juice out of there. Parsley into the sauce. Okay. Remove chicken breast. Get your knife, point it on top of the wishbone, and go through it. Beautiful breast. Season. Hot pan. Olive oil. Skin side down first. Just really nice and crispy. Butter. Baste. Chicken with morel mushroom sauce. Done. Monkfish. It's quite a difficult fish to get right because there's a lot of water in monkfish. Curry powder and salt. And the salt starts to extract the water. So when we come to roasting it, it doesn't boil. We get a really nice colour on there. Leave five minutes. Muscle broth. Thyme, bay leaves. Hot pan, mussels. Get your lid ready in this hand. White wine in. Now, shake it. This turns the mussels around, almost like being put in a tumble dryer. So they cook evenly. 30 seconds. And go. Look. That's gold dust. Shell mussels. Lovely, look at that. Look, beautiful. Celery, carrots, leeks, garlic, saffron, salt, curry powder. But the secret behind it is that really nice little pinch of saffron that gives it that little bit of lift. Strain mussel juice. Reduce. Add mussels. Bring it up to the boil. 100 mils double cream. Coriander. Back to the fish. The water has come out. Pat dry. Amazing. Lovely colour. The fish is too hot to slice, so if I slightly slice it, all the goodness will run out of it. Leave you to sit in there for about two or three minutes so it relaxes. It's nice big chunky slices. Monkfish with curried mussel broth. Done. Rack of lamb. This is the Rolls Royce of lamb. It is every chef's dream to cook this. In kitchens, especially in my kitchens, we always season on plates because we don't want to waste any salt and pepper. So once we've seasoned from a height, we then get the rack of lamb and almost sort of rub it in and let the lamb absorb all that salt and pepper so we're wasting nothing. 
hot pan olive oil. It's simple mathematics. No colour, no flavour. Get some colour on there. Skin side down, hot oven, seven to eight minutes. Herb crust. I'll just pick some parsley in. Parsley, rosemary, thyme. That parsley gives it a really nice dark green colour. Great parmesan and seasoning. And then just a drizzle of olive oil to bring it together. Blitz it. Comes out amazing, eh? Firm with the spring and it will be cooked perfectly pink. Dijon mustard. Whilst it's hot, the sort of mustard absorbs and melts quickly into the fat and just makes it a lot more flavoursome. And it's almost like sort of dipping your lolly into sherbet. Crisp the breadcrumbs three to four minutes. Plate, her crusted rack of lamb, done. A lot of people get a little bit worried about venison because they think it's sort of very gamey and very strong, but it's not. Salt, pepper, hot pan, olive oil, seal. Butter, base, butter paper. It protects the venison, keeps it really nice and moist. Nothing's drying out. They are the perfect chef's blanket. Hot oven, eight minutes. Red wine, chocolate sauce. Pancetta, shallot, garlic. Be quite generous with the black peppercorns because we need to wake the sauce up a bit. Thyme, bay leaf. 350 mils, red wine. The red wine gives it body, texture, and a real nice depth of flavour. Reduce. 350 mils, brown chicken stock. Reduce. Quite a beautiful. Sieve. Then a little dash of raspberry vinegar. Dark chocolate. Delicious sauce. Mm. Don't slice it too thin. Slightly pink in the centre. Loin of venison with red wine chocolate sauce. Done. Brill. Razor sharp knife. Fill it. Nice, long slices. That's the first one off. Up. Brill bones and turbot bones are the most sought after in any kitchen. That will make the most perfect fish top. Skin. And just pull. This little bit here is called the skirt. That's lovely inside a fish pie. It really is delicious. Season. Both sides. Red wine. Thyme, bay leaf, garlic, salt, pepper, and olive oil. Poach. The sauce. Shallots. Um, it's a bit of a sort of cook's thing, really, because onions are far too strong. A shallot is quite mellow. Butter. It gets some real nice colour on there. I want this nice, real nut brown flavour on the shallot. Mm. 
sugar. Really starts to caramelize those shallots. Beautiful shine on there. Raspberry vinegar. In. And it just sort of wakes everything up a little bit. Add poaching wine. Reduce. 50 grams of butter. Shake it into the sauce. Fish slice onto the plate. Brill in red wine sauce. Done. Beef fillet. Lean meat with little fine sinews of fat running through. It just melts in your mouth like butter. Seasoned. Hot pan, olive oil. Seal. Mustard. Think about it. Fillet beef Wellington, English mustard. You're not going to put Dijon on there, are you? Mushrooms. Season. Blitz. Now, I've got to take the water out of the mushrooms. Look how wet they are. We don't put oil or butter into the pan. We put nothing in there. Look how much water's coming out now. Assemble. Cling film. Parma ham. Mushrooms. Beef. Centre. And roll. Twist it nice and tight. Chill. 20 minutes. Puff pastry. Beef. Unwrap. On to the pastry. Egg wash. Don't skimp on the egg wash now, because we really need it to stick. Tuck that in. Chill. Five minutes. Glaze. Score. Rock salt. Bake. The most important thing about a fillet of beef wellington, do not slice it thinly, OK? Turn it round and slice it about an inch thick. Pheasant. The secret behind cooking this bird is actually lining the breast with some streaky bacon, because it really is a very lean bird with hardly any fat. Thai. Not too tight. A, it keeps the bacon on, and B, it actually keeps the bird in a really good shape. Hot pan, olive oil. Season. Time. Pheasant, nice hot pan, streaky bacon, thyme, straight into the oven. Bread sauce. Thyme. Salt. Pepper. Blitz. Hot pan, butter. Onion. On the heat. Cloves. Star anise, bay leaf. The big daddy. Black pepper. All in the china shop. This is the one that actually brings it all together. Sweat. Milk. Let it infuse. Bring it to the boil. Slowly. Back to pheasant. Base. That keeps the pheasant really nice and moist. Finish the sauce. Sieve. That milk is amazing. Bread crumbs in. Butter. Now, we have a really nice, smooth, smart, sexy bread sauce. OK, pheasant. Rest 15 minutes. And turn it upside down. And all the juices from the top of the carcass run into the bottom of the breast, and so by the time it's cooled down, it's full of flavour. And the whole leg just falls away. Delicious. Pheasant with bread sauce. Done. 
Sea bass. In French, l'eau de mer. That means wolf of the sea. Fill it. Just run the knife all the way down. One nice long swipe. There you go. One fill it off. Easy. Pepper sauce. Rather than cut the peppers in half and take out the seeds, just cut around it, leave the seeds in there, and do the job once. It's almost like as if you're peeling an orange. Shallots. Nice hot pan. Olive oil. Star anise. The anise flavour goes absolutely beautifully with the sweetness of the peppers. Salt. Basil. White wine vinegar. Burma. Reduce. It gives body to the sauce. Nice, glossy, syrupy. 200 mils of water. Simmer. It's fresh, it's vibrant, and it goes brilliantly with a sea bass. Blitz. Absolutely beautiful bass. Score. Salt. Time. It's just so perfumed as a sea bass. Olive oil. Skin side down. In it goes. Fingers on top for 30 seconds. 90% of the cooking time will take place in that skin. But you'll know when it's cooked, when it starts turning bright white. Now it's time to turn it over. Just finish it with olive oil. Sea bass with pepper sauce. Done. Turkey. Turkey. The one hit wonder. Um, absolutely amazing bird. Stuff. Onion. Orange. Garlic. Thyme and bay leaf. Season. Truffle butter. This little beauty helps to take the turkey to a different division. These cost 50 quid for that size. Yes, it's expensive, but boy, is it worth it. Don't chop the truffle too small because we want to taste and identify the truffle. Parsley. Tarragon. Salt, touch of pepper, tablespoon of olive oil, and that stops the butter from burning. Take your piping bag and fill it. Separate skin from meat. Piping bag in. Pipe butter. Massage. Salt, pepper, olive oil. Roast. Citrus breadcrumbs. Pancetta. Onion. Thyme. You don't need to a good old chef's trick and pull down and just peel it off its lovely flowers. Pine nuts. Butter. Bread, orange, lemon. And as it starts browning, sprinkle your orange and lemon breadcrumbs. Lemon juice. There we go. Beautiful. Rest. Tin foil keeps it nice and warm and it cools down slowly so the breasts become really nice and moist. Calm. What you can smell, of course, is that amazing truffle. Absolutely beautiful. Turkey with truffle butter and citrus breadcrumbs, done.